So we begin with, in fact, this very same Macho Man Randy Savage. And there's a recap of when Jor Seal kidnapped Elizabeth and then interfered at WrestleMania 3, costing Randy Savage the Intercontinental title against Ricky Steamboat. And Savage says, tonight there's a Lumberjack match. He's going to settle this once and for all. And I wasn't sure when he was done if he meant settle this between him and Steamboat or him and, and Steel. He meant George Steel. So this is the final blow-off match between Randy Savage and George the Animal Steel. So then we get a series of promos. Now, during and in between these promos, all the Lumberjacks are making the reference for the match. So there's Duggan's out there. Now, now, Duggan was a Lumberjack, which is odd considering his placement later on the show. But uh, the Bulldogs were out there, the Hearts, Hercules, all this. And among the Lumberjacks that come out, Hongy Talk Man walks out next to Kimchi. And Jesse and Vince are both baffled. They're, they can't understand this is a ruse by the Honky Tonk Man to How dress as Kim Chi for one night. How could there possibly be two Kim Chi's? think there are two Kim Chi's. So Gene interviews George the Animal Steel. Now, George's promos are always wacky. This came off like the character of George the Animal Steel, beyond his usual simple-minded self, was also completely drunk. He had zero idea what was going on. Gene's trying to explain the concept of a lumberjack match. George can't even, can barely even form words. Like, le- less than usual. He's less communicative than usual. And he just rests his head on Gene's chest. And Gene looks into the camera and shakes his head in sadness and says, This isn't right, Vince. I really don't think George the Animal Steel understands how brutal a lumberjack match can be. Yeah, he makes it very clear if you lose, this may be the last time you ever see Liz. Yes. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's never going to see Elizabeth again? Like, is he being sent to the moon? What do you mean if he well, loses his magic? he'll never get to spend time with her. We don't know that. Yeah, I don't know. Anything can happen in this world. Stranger things have happened. But I just love the idea that this guy, the baby face, does not have the mental faculties. <laughs> to, 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 he's not in control of his own actions or, own, or doesn't understand the, the repercussions of his own actions. Let's send him in there in the most dangerous, brutal match we have, a lumberjack match. Sure, but then Steamboat comes up, and he goes up to to Gene. Yes. And he says, listen, you're trying to confuse this guy. He knows what's going on. I'm going to go to the ring with him. I'm going to help him out. He helped me at WrestleMania the third, I believe he called it. I I wrote down, I think he said WrestleMania number three. Number three, that's right. WrestleMania (laughs) number three. I don't know why that's so funny, but it was. (laughs) I will be there for George. Listen. God bless Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, one of the great fucking workers of this or maybe any era. He was as horrible a promo <laughs> as he was awesome in the ring. Dude, every promo that he did on the show was god awful. It was so much cringe. Oh my, this poor guy. <laughs> he, well, I mean, he was never great at them. No. But he, Although, uh, that's not true. Well, I mean, it is kind of true, but when he came back for that feud with Chris Jericho, he mm. cut a fucking awesome series of promos. So I don't know what the fuck happened. Well, here, he was not being Ricky Steamboat. He was being the dragon, and I must clarify here, because that meant a couple of different things. In this era, it basically meant a, a, a kung fu action figure come to life. He had to, he had to constantly be doing katas and uh, shouting and... Chopping things. Yeah, but even and- when he had to talk like a normal person, like, say, Gene, listen, he doesn't get it, but I'm going to go out there with him. I mean, he couldn't even do that in a realistic yeah. manner. No. I, I, I'm not sure he was trying to do it in a realistic manner, though. That's my point. Is He was trying to be wacky. So Steamboat says he's going to help George out because George helped him. They leave together. And Gene looks at the camera and smiles and says, you know, Vince, that really hits you right here. Sure does. Now Gene's interviewing Randy Savage, who claims he is still the Intercontinental Champion, and he'll be a champion forever. He insists Miss Elizabeth agree with him, and of course he terrified Liz does. So Gene finally asks, why would you take this match with George the Animal Steel? To which Macho replies, as he so often did, you gotta be ribbing me! (laughs) And it never fails to make me laugh when he asks that. He says he wants to finish George Steel tonight. He knows Steamboat's gonna be out there. Steamboat will be no factor. But he will always be on Randy's mind until he loses that IC belt back to the Macho Man. So it's Randy Savage versus George Steele in a lumberjack match. Holy smokes. 
This was so much better than I was expecting. It was so fun. Like, the Lumberjacks all knew how to be Lumberjacks. Yes! It's not complicated. Like, there's good guys and there's bad guys. George the Animal Steel gets thrown out on the good guy side. And the good guys actually throw him back into the ring. Yes. Because, in fact, that is their job. Now, That's the rules. The difference is, when someone got thrown out, when George got thrown out to the heel side... They weren't about just throwing him in. They were about laying a beating on him. Exactly. And then throwing him in. But to the baby faces, I mean, that was their job. These guys, if they get out of the ring, we got to put them back inside. The, the baby faces treated both Savage and Steel equally. When they were thrown outside... No, no, them- no, Vinny. It wasn't equally. They, they threw them in no matter who they were, but the heels would beat on George no, no. the Animal Steel. Brian, Brian, baby faces would treat them equally, I said. I see. The baby yes. face didn't attack the heel... No. They didn't attack they, Randy? They threw him back in. That okay. was their job. The all same right. as they did for Steel. When Savage got thrown on the heel side, they gave him all sorts of time to, re- to to collect himself until finally the baby faces ran over from the other side of the ring and threw him in. And when Steel got thrown out on the heel side, they all put the boots to him and eventually put him back in. Now so. Let's talk about the real bullshit, though, Vinny. All right. Fucking Vince McMahon. Like, <laughs> yes. it's not even... It's like It's absolutely blatant right now that this fucking guy is a biased... Motherfucker, okay? Yes. George the Animal Steel is biting Randy Savage in the face. He's opened his mouth, and he's chewing. He's gnawing on Randy Savage's face. Vince McMahon denies it. Yes, Jesse screams, he's biting, and Vince screams, he is not. He's (laughs) not biting, he says. I'm like, fuck you, I'm watching with my own two fucking eyes. What are you talking about? He's goddamn biting him. Then Vince says, well, this is a wide open kind of affair. I'm like, if Randy fucking Savage bit George the Animal Steel, are you just going to sit there and say, oh, it's a wide open kind of affair? Oh, he's not really biting him. No, 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 no. He is well beyond, well beyond bias. At one point, so Hacksaw, Hacksaw, who's fucking Hacksaw, dude. This guy, he's got his two by four, and they take the two by four away from him. Somehow he gets it back, and he hits the ring. And it's not a DQ. He's running around with his fucking two-by-four. Vince says, and I quote, he gets a little carried away. What do you want? (laughs) And Jesse's like, I want a fucking DQ, or I want him thrown out, or something. This fucking guy's running around with a a two-by-four in the ring. (laughs) He gets a little carried away. What do you want, says Vince. I mean, honestly, even before the match, Savage is doing his entrance. Liz just gets on the apron as part of this entrance. And George the Animal Steel walks up to Elizabeth and begins to grope her. There's no other way to put it. He just puts his paws on her. And Jesse points out, he's molesting her. And Vince screams, no, he's not. Dude, Vince has so little credibility that when he denied that George was molesting Elizabeth, if I hadn't seen it, I would have immediately called the police. If Vince is denying that, for sure the guy is molesting her. So, yes, finally, Steel gets thrown outside, and the heels won't throw him back in. They're just stomping him until Duggan chases him away with a 2 by 4 This leads to Duggan being ejected. He's, he gets out of the ring. He shouts, bullshit! And, like, in the same breath, turns to Honky, get out of my way! And Honky, of course, wants nothing to do with this man, man. He backs up, and Duggan's out. So that's their excuse to have a commercial break. So much more fun than just two guys do a dive, and Michael Cole says, Raw rolls on. So, match continues after the break. There's all sorts of chaos here. George gets thrown outside. Danny Davis, who is now the Hart Foundation lackey, he tries to attack George and gets his ass kicked. He gets dropped with a headbutt on the floor. So, Savage gets thrown outside. He starts to brawl with Steamboat. Steamboat starts to brawl with Hercules, his opponent tonight, a giant battle royal breaks out. All the lumberjacks are fighting each other. Amidst all the confusion, Danny Davis runs in, clonks Animal with a bell. Animal's laid out. Savage hits the big elbow. Savage gets the pin, and Jesse screams, Randy Macho Man Savage has ended the feud, McMahon. Oh, thank God. But I loved the match. I thought the match was so much fun. I thought it was like the best possible match that Randy Savage and George the Animal Steel could have. I laughed my ass off at what a fucking chill Vince McMahon was. Just appalling. 